Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez with Steven Gonzalez VoiceOvers. How are you doing today? There's a technique that whether you're a long form narrator or that 15 second stinger specialist that can really help with your editing process. And so punch and roll, that's what's next on Reaperville Voice Talent. In this video, we're gonna be tackling punch and roll, exactly what it is, where it comes from, and how it fits inside a voiceover project. And then we're gonna be talking about pre-roll. This is what makes punch and roll happen, what it is and how to configure it within Reaper. And we're gonna be having some demonstrations along the way. And then we're gonna be looking at two very specialized Reaper topics. The first being a record mode known as time selection auto punch. This thing is absolutely wonderful. It's the golden safety net when it comes to recording within Reaper. And then finally, we're gonna be looking at recording audio during pre-roll, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Why would we wanna do it and how to set it up? Along the way, there will be some side topics. Now, there are some caveats to go with this video, and the first one is that I'm going to invite you to get your notepad out, whether electronic or paper. I'm going to invite you to go get that cup of coffee or a bag of popcorn or both, whatever, and then buckle your seatbelt because this is going to be a long ride with a bunch of information. And I know that some people are new to voiceover, and if they're not necessarily new to voiceover, they're certainly new to punch and roll. I don't think that you can get everything that's in this video in one setting. So I'm requesting that if you have some fogginess about certain topics, that you watch the video again. And then if there is still further fogginess, then in the description below, there's a timestamp list with topics and you just click on the specific timestamp for that topic, it'll jump you right to that topic. And then if you still have further fogginess about anything, then we can set up a one-on-one, -on -one, and I'll be happy to do that for you. The second caveat, I guess you would call it by popular demand. Um, I don't know how many PMs I've received about this, and um, one or two public requests. So here is my editing table, and You'll see some things on the periphery here. Don't worry about those right now, including this little guy right there. The three things that we're interested in are these three right here. All right, so what is it that you're going to actually see? Well, you're gonna see this. So you're gonna have Reaper as the main window and a PIP in the lower right-hand corner. Now, with all of that out of the way and without further ado, let's get started. Now, what exactly is punch and roll in the first place? Well. Imagine yourself in a studio and you're recording an audiobook. And I mean, we're human, right? So we make mistakes. Even the most professional, the most experienced voice actor makes mistakes from time to time. Very rarely, but they do. And so what will happen on our mistake is that the engineer will stop the recording process, back the playback cursor to a point before your mistake, and then do what's called a roll. And that term comes from the old days whenever music and audio were stored on magnetic tape. And they would come in these reels, and the reels would sit on spindles on the recorder. And so what would happen is when you hear roll tape, the engineer would literally turn on the machine, and those reels would start rotating on those spindles, and the tape would go through the recording mechanism. So for us, the engineer would start rolling the project and at a point that seems to be completely random to us, completely unknowable, the engineer will punch the record button, and then the recording process will continue. So really, it should be called roll and punch instead of punch and roll, but punch and roll took a hold, and that's what we have, so that's it. How do we configure this thing? Well, we start with the pre-roll, and the pre-roll's definition is simply the distance between the roll and the punch points. That's it. That's what the pre-roll is. And so how do we set this up? Well, we go into Reaper. And for those of you who have gone through the fundamental sequence, you've already done the first part, which is setting up the BPM and the time signature. For those of you who have not, I really encourage you to pause this video, go to the fundamental sequence video called Global Project Settings, whether for Mac or for Windows. Look at that, participate in its tweaking of some certain parameters, and then come back. If, if you don't want to do that, then I'm going to go through what the necessary parameters will be. And so we're gonna be going very, very quickly. Here we go. So we're gonna to go to File, 
and project settings, and we're gonna to go to the project settings tab and project BPM, you should have 120. Change that to a 60. And time signature, you should have four slash four or four over four, or as musicians would say it, four, four time. And change that first four to a one. Now we've said one measure is equal to one beat. That's what this one is all about. And then because project BPM is 60, 60 beats per minute is what BPM stands for. That means that there is one beat happening every second. What we've done is taken a measure to equal a beat to equal a second. So a measure is equal to a second, and that's the goal, equating a measure to a second. Remember, Reaper's meant primarily as a music production software package, but we have to make it think the way we do in seconds, and this is the way to do it for punch and roll. Now, if you want to keep 120, well, that means that there's a beat happening every half second, right? Or in another way of saying it, and maybe the more important way to say it for our purposes, there are two beats happening every second. That beats per second is our number that needs to go to the top here. So at 120, that's two beats per second. So we need to change that top number to a two. If we do something like 420, which is seven beats per second, well, then we need to change the top number to a seven. I give you these and others in the description below because of actions and scripts that are granular uh, according to the tempo. In other words, the faster the tempo, the more effective those actions and scripts are going to be. And for right now, for our purposes, we need to keep it at 60 and 1 over 4. Now that we've set that up, but before we go with punch and roll, let's see what it's like to do a mistake and then punch in our correction. So we're going to develop a track. We're going to record arm it, and I'm going to stretch it out until the zero appears in the VU meter, which is right about there. And I'm going to change the input to the microphone through which I'm speaking with you now. And I'm going to label this as PR, or sorry, record without punch and roll. Now I've set this up, believe it or not, I've set this up as a one action thing. So from now on, whenever I develop a track, you're gonna see it go from a, you know, kind of a blank track to this in like no time. And in a future video, I might show you how that's done. The thing that you wanna take a look at, the two, well, three things you wanna take a look at. The first is the cursor location in the transport. You'll note that in this demonstration, it's only going to increment, it's only going to count up from zero. And then you want to look also at the Reaper status. It's going to toggle between stopped and either playing or recording. And then finally, you want to look at the VU meter here. You want your peaks to go between negative 12 and negative six. And it's okay if it hops above negative six every once in a while, every once in a while. If you're not reaching 12 on a regular basis, then really you need to crank the gain on your interface. And if you're going above negative six all the time, then you really need to crank it down. And so let's begin with the mistake in three, two, one. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give retreat. Okay, I meant to say we can give battle. And so I made that mistake. And I want the cursor Around, right about here at the end of the last known good so that I can record the pickup. But I can't get my cursor there simply by clicking because of these vertical dotted lines collectively known as the grid. For music, it's a wonderful thing. For VO, it's a nuisance. So you really want to take that grid out. And the way that we do this is by going to the icon toolbar and clicking on this button. And now we can go ahead and click wherever we want that edit cursor to go. And we want it to go right, roughly about right there. And now I need to go over cursor modes with you in anticipation of something called trimming. The first mode that you see with the mouse cursor is what I call the time mode. In other words, if it's in this kind of appearance, I can drag out a time selection. So if I'm in an empty area in the arrange area, or if I'm in the ruler, I can simply drag out a time selection, you see? Now the next mode is called the pointer mode. And in this case, we can select and or move things. 
So for example, I can select this media item or I can move it, you see? And if I click here, I can move the edit cursor. The next mode is what's called fade mode. And it, it happens right before we get to the edge of the media item and it looks like that. Now what this allows me to do is drag a fade into the media item. Now it, in this case, it's out. But if I were on the left side, it would be fade in. And also I can pull up its context menu and change the shape of the fade, you see? Very cool. And then finally, at the edge of the media item, we have what's called the trim mode. And you see there is the double arrow left right thing with a square bracket that's open to the middle of the media item in question. If I were on the left side, the square bracket would be opening to the right again, to the middle of the media item. In this case, we're on the right side, so it opens to the left. Now, if I want to reduce the visible presence of a media item, that's called trimming, and it looks like this. Now, watch what happens right before I get to the edit cursor. Bam, that's what's called snapping, perfectly aligning itself with something else. And there's a reason why I keep the grid off, but snapping on, is because snapping affects more than just a grid. It affects media items, cursors, markers, regions, all kinds of cool stuff. And so normally, again, you would have the grid off, but the snap on. If you want to increase the visible presence of a media item, it's called untrimming, and you simply drag away from the middle of the media item. Now, eventually, you're gonna to get to a point where it snaps, like that. And then if you further untrim, you'll see two cusps here on the top and the bottom. This is telling us that this is the end of the media item. But if that's the end of the media item, what gives with all this audio here? Well, if you notice, this audio segment and this audio segment are identical. And that is because what is happening is that the media item is repeating itself. In Reaper parlance, that's called looping. And I can think of a wonderful, wonderful thing about Reaper for looping, and that is room tone. Record, say, five minutes of room tone, pull out the best 30 seconds, save it off as a WAV file, and then you record and edit your project, whether it's an audiobook or e-learning slide deck or, or commercial stack, whatever it happens to be. And then you would develop a second track, call it room tone, let's say, import that 30-second wave and then untrim it for as long as the project is. Way more efficient than sitting there and saying copy and then paste, 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 paste. Wonderful way to do things. And then finally, before we get to actually recording the pickup, there is an action that says, hey, wherever the cursor is, wherever the edit cursor is, that's where I want the trim to happen. And you can go to the actions list and you can say trim right edge. And you'll see item edit, trim right edge of item under mouse to edit cursor. And you'll note that I've given it a shortcut. In your actions list, it probably will not have a shortcut. And to add a shortcut, you simply go over here after selecting it, and you would say add, and then you would do alt T or option T if you're on a Mac. And then from that point, you're ready to rock and roll with that keyboard shortcut. Now let's parse this out. Trim right edge of item. Okay, so we're talking about this right edge right here. Item under mouse. So for example, I don't have to necessarily have this media item selected. I can simply have my mouse over it in cursor or in pointer mode. And then it says to edit cursor. So basically what it says is move this edge to wherever the cursor is. So if the cursor is here, then I should be able to run this and it'll move this edge to that cursor. Now you'll note again, shortcut is Alt-T in this case. I have assigned Alt-T to my controller and it's this upper right-hand corner button right here. So what does it look like? Let's just give a demonstration here. If I hover over the media item and the cursor is right there, bam. It just trimmed over to this side. It didn't delete any audio. If I untrim, you can see that indeed the audio is still there. This is what's known as non-destructive editing. 
in things like Audacity or whatever, this would definitely get rid of whatever audio is there. But in Reaper's case, it's not. Now, we want the trim to actually be here because this is the mistake. And so we'll trim to there. We'll re-record arm this thing, and we're going to do the pickup now. Now, I'd better have the right cadence, the right timing, you know, the right emotion, all this good stuff to match what came before it. Because once I hit record, it's going to be, I'm going to be on stage. So here we go. And remember, the phrase is, we can give battle. So here we go in three, two, one. We can give battle. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. Okay, I wasn't quite comfortable with that pause there. It seems just a little too long. So I'm going to trim just a little bit, and then I'm going to push this together and see what that sounds like. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, notice something else about these media items. Now, two media items. This one has a time marker of 1733, which means 533 p.m. This one has a time marker of 1741. So this is later than this one. And it also means, more importantly, that these two media items represent two different WAV files. Remember this. Reaper will not, will not directly touch a WAV file unless it's creating it in one of four ways. Recording, which is what we did. Gluing, which says basically, I want to take these two and make them one WAV file. And what'll happen is Reaper will actually generate another WAV file and generate another media item to represent that particular WAV file and not touch these two WAV files here. So that's gluing. The other two ways are stimming and freezing. And when we get to coursework, I'll show you what those are. So that's without punch and roll. Now, let's talk about setting up punch and roll. We go to options and we go to metronome and pre-roll settings. Now remember, we have equated one measure to being one second. So now, instead of pre-roll measures, it's pre-roll seconds. Now, we can be comfortable with two if you want. We can do five if you need it, and that's fine. We're going to take our cue from a well-known, well-loved voice artist whose license plate says three beeps. And that's a reference to his cues whenever he's in a project. So what, what he will hear is beep, 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 and then he starts recording. What this effectively will do is, from the edit cursor, wherever we put the cursor, it'll back off three seconds and then count down. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Now to actually engage punch and roll, we have to check this checkbox right here, pre-roll before recording. I usually keep pre-roll before recording on all the time. And I normally have it about three seconds, maybe five seconds sometimes, depending on the moon phase and wind direction. Pre-roll before playback, for those of you who have seen this, if you're a musician, this may be something you want to do. If you're strictly doing this for voice projects, really, you don't need it. And I'm going to keep it off. Okay, notice that there is no OK button. There is no Apply button. There's no Cancel button. That is because this modal window, anything you touch in here, it's automatic and it's, in, it's immediate. So we'd better know what we needed to do before we got into here. Let's X out of here. And now let's develop another track, and I have what's called a custom action, which does that. So the track is ready. We just have to relabel it a little bit here. So this is record with pre-roll. And I'm going to use the jog wheel to get the cursor to the origin or zero time. Now watch the cursor location and watch the Reaper status. There are going to be some drastic changes in three, two, one. Pre-roll. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give retreat. Okay, did you notice what happened in the cursor location? It counted down. And this is a question that I feel all the time when it comes to punch and roll. Well, if I'm at zero or if I'm within the pre-roll length, what does Reaper do? Well, it simply counts down. And especially if it's at zero and we set it up for three seconds, it's going to count down three 
two, one, blast off, so to speak. But did you notice also that the Reaper status changed? It said recording, but it was suffixed with pre-roll as the pre-roll was happening. And then once it got to the punch point, the pre-roll suffix dropped off. Now, let's rearm this. Let's trim. And now let's record the pickup in three, two, one. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. Okay, did you notice that I was able to speak with myself for those first two phrases? And then I was able to get the third phrase. Let's see what that sounds like. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So that's punch and roll in its essence. Now, let's talk about some other things, the sort of specialized things that Reaper can do. In order to talk about the next major topic, we have to go on a side topic known as takes. And in order to do takes, I have to um, show you what takes are first. <laughs> so what exactly is a take? Well, a take can be something like where you have a tag, for example, and the client wants three wild takes. And it usually is a tag. So you say like tag, 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 you know, give them three different options for them to select and let them select which one they want. And another definition, I guess, what you would call of takes is correction, whether it's because of a pickup on our side or it's a re-scripting or changing of words from the client's side. And so that's a take. And let me demonstrate what a take looks like in Reaper. In three, two, one, pre-roll. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give retreat. Okay, this time I'm not going to trim. I'm just gonna go for it. So here we go in three, two, one, pre-roll. Sun Tzu said, if, if equally balanced, balanced, we can give battle. Okay, notice what happened here. We have these horizontal lanes, and that's what these are called, lanes. And then inside each lane, there is a take. So if you look at the label here, you'll see take two of two. Whereas if you click on the original one, it says take one of two. So let's see what this sounds like. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give retreat. Okay, that's the mistake. Let's choose the correction or the pickup and see what that sounds like. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. There we go. That is a take. Now, there are some people who are uncomfortable with multiple lanes inside the track. There is a way to show either the selected take or the most recent recorded take. And it has to do with options and show all taken lanes when room. Now you can hit Control L if you're on Windows or Command L if you're on a Mac. But watch what happens whenever I run this toggle. You'll see now it's only the take that I selected. Now, if I wanted to select the other take, I must run the, uh, the toggle and then select the other take and then run the toggle again. Now, this is a global toggle. So you can't have just one track doing it. It's going to affect all the tracks. So let's figure out, okay, we're going to do that one and take that out. And now let's talk about a record mode known as time selection auto punch. This thing, I've been waiting to show you all this for <laughs> since the beginning of the um, video here. Record has three modes to it, and you can choose which one you want. Right now it's a normal mode. But if we pull up the context menu of the record button, you'll see that the three options are there. Auto punch selected items. I've seen that mostly in music and I've seen it a little bit, just a little bit inside voice projects, not much. The vast majority I've seen time selection auto punch and you'll see that the, uh, the record buttons icon has changed. That gives us a signal that, hey, TSAP is engaged. Let's see what this looks like. So this is recording with TSAP, time selection auto punch. Let's see what this looks like in three. Two, one, pre-roll. Sun Tzu said, if equally forced, we can give battle. Okay, notice I said if equally forced, not equally balanced. 
So this is where the mistake is happening. What I can do is drag a time selection from the end of the last known good audio to the beginning of what's called the resume audio. In other words, where the audio is, is correct. What time selection auto punch says is that while we're outside of time selections, which there's only one really, so the time selection, you're in playback mode. But once you get into the time selection, you're in record mode. Practically what that means is in this case, it's going to be in playback mode from the beginning until it gets to the beginning of the time selection and it's going to go into record mode. While in the time selection, it's going to be recording until the end of the time selection and then it's going to go back into playback mode until the end. So let's see what that looks like. Rearming this thing in three, two, one, pre-roll. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. You protect everything except for what you want to correct, the punch-in. Everything else is just not going to be wiped out. And the thing is, again, if this were a destructive DAW, whatever's here would have been gone. But again, if I untrim this, you'll see that the original audio is still there. It is still there. Now that brings us to recording audio during pre-roll. If we look at PNR at the beginning here, we unmute this thing and we drag this out a little bit and we come here. Remember, the cusps say that this is the end of the media item. So recording actually started right here, right before I started speaking. So in other words, the pre-roll had finished and then the record mode was engaged. What RADP says is that the recording point actually isn't going to be at the punch point. It's going to be at the roll point. And let me show you what that means. Let me develop another track. And this time we're going to do with RADP. Now I had to turn RADP off whenever I started with this because it's on by default. So realistically, you should have already recorded audio during your pre-roll. But to turn it on and off, you can go to Options and then under Preferences. And then under Audio, under Recording, it's right here. Record audio during pre-roll. Now, let's see what this looks like in three, two, one, pre-roll. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give retreat. Okay, now I'm going to trim this back and start again. So in three, two, one. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. Okay, that's cool. But if we drag this out and we untrim it, you'll see that indeed I've recorded another take of the entire thing. Now let's listen to the second phrase to see if we like the first one or the second one better. If equally balanced, if equally balanced, if equally balanced, if equally balanced, let's say we like the second one better. Well, then all we have to do is trim this first one and then trim the second one to the same point right before the second phrase. And then we squeeze these together. And now let's see what this sounds like. Sun Tzu said, if equally balanced, we can give battle. And that's what I'm talking about recording audio during playback. If you found this video educational or fun or both, do me a favor and smash that like button subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell setting it to all so that you don't miss anything whenever I drop a video or go live. And especially if you have a comment or question, please drop them in the comment section below. It not only helps you and our fellow voice talent, but it also helps the algorithm and makes this video just that much more present in YouTube. Also, if you found this of worth, share this video out. I don't know of any punch and roll in this in-depth matter.
So this is Stephen Gonzalez with Stephen Gonzalez VoiceOvers, wishing you all all the best, and you have a wonderful and wonder-filled day.